This is Border Crossings. I'm Larry London. And on today's show, the smooth and electric voice of Grammy-winning singer Regina Bell. From jazz to pop, Regina Bell has made an indelible mark in music and film with her award-winning hit, A Whole New World, from the Disney classic Aladdin to the pop jazz hits, Baby Come to Me and Make It Like It Was. Regina Bell has sold millions of records and performed on some of the world's biggest stages for presidents and kings and queens. Her new CD is her 10th and celebrates her 25-year marriage to former NBA basketball star John Battle called The Day Life Began. The couple have four children, and on today's show, we'll get up close and personal with Regina Bell. Stay tuned to Border Crossings. Hi, this is Larry London. We welcome you to Border Crossings. And it's not often that we get a chance to welcome a superstar into our studios. On tour right now and on the road for a brand new album, her first R&B album in 15 years, Regina Bell is here with us in D.C. Welcome, Regina. Thank you. Thank you so much, Larry. You look lovely. I, I love that. Thank you. Beautiful summery refreshing look yeah a little bit of color just to kind of make me feel good how about that yeah you 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 sound great thank and, you uh, congratulations on the new album i mean 15 years in the making why did you decide to go from gospel back to r&b um i actually you know you people kind of think that you know you leave gospel and you or you leave one thing and you're doing something else um it was i, I got the okay i got the green light uh, from 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 God to say, you know, it's okay. Uh, just remember to, that you you got to make messages. So, you know, when I went to do this record, I wanted to be sure that I had a message attached with each song. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, um, the promotion of family, um, the the promotion, the the um, the message of it's time to wake up. Some things are really going on in the world, and you know, life is passing us by. Mm -hmm. um, the the song of celebration of uh, husband and wife to, you know, where we, you know, hey, when without the kids, I just need to say I love you. I thank you for being who you are. There's only one of you. So the, these are the kind of messages that you're going to get throughout the record. So I think um, I think it was an appropriate transition to do what I'm doing. And uh, that's that's why I'm here. That's why we're here. And the name of the new album, The Day Life Began. Yes. That's a bold statement. And I'm sure people are going to wonder, OK, why do you feel that way? Why? Why was this day any other different than any other day in your life? Well, you know what? It's not it's not uh, drawn to a particular day. Um, the Day Life Began really uh, symbolizes moments in our lives. Uh, for some of us, it could be when you met your true love. For some of us, it can be getting that dream job. For some of us, it can be um, the the first day I actually realized that God does hear prayers. Um, so, you know, it, it there are many moments of the day life began. It, it, it's basically more of a, um, uh, of a note of when things changed majorly in my life. So, you know, that's more of what it's saying. So the day life began was, you know, you can have many of those moments is, you know, kind of those plateau moments in your life. Mm -hmm. What was the day life changed for you? What was the most prolific event in Regina Bell's life? That wow. You... Um, well, this record was one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, I, I would think the birth of my first child, um, I had suffered five miscarriages oh my. prior to um, my first child being born. And to date, I have five children. They're all healthy. They're all great. Um, great. Four girls and one boy. Um, the day life began. The day when I first realized I could actually make a living doing what I love doing, that was the day life began for me. Um, um, the day that I stopped asking my mother to pray for me and I started learning how to pray for myself. Um, these are hallmark moments in my life. So, you know, I thought the this would be a great title. You know, when I thought, when I just looked back over my own life. Another day 
lost in this veil of gray, fading into night. It's like I'm blind, it's like I'm paralyzed. Don't feel like I'm alive. Then you appear through the rain, chase all my clouds away. The day I found your love is the day life began. First time I smelled the flower. Oh. First time I felt the breeze. Oh. First time I saw the rainbow. Heard a melody. Yeah. Never understand beauty until I held your hand. The day I found your love was the day life began. Never why people like butterflies or watch the sad sun to stare at the sky seem like a waste of time until I found the one who opened my eyes and made me see all the beauty surrounding me. Now, how did you end up in music? And what made you decide that this was the path you wanted to take? You know, I, I, music chose me. I never really made the choice. Um, it's always been a part of my life. My mother said I've been singing. Uh, I was singing before I even knew how to talk. And um, my brother and I, you know, we made a lot of music. And, and for some reason, our best music uh uh, times were always like one and two o'clock in the morning. I praised my parents because they never, ever told us, shut up, go to bed. <laughs> so it was really a great thing to have parents like that because they gave us an opportunity to grow musically. Mm -hmm. um, and I, of course, went into this line of music and my brother went into producing and um, writing and Bernard Bell, he's written for Michael Jackson and, Whitney Houston, Bobby Brown, Boy George, um, wow. High Five, Case. The, I mean, just uh, the list goes on and on and on. And um, we've been able to do what we do and love what we do and it not really seem like work. So I don't know that we may, really made the decision to do music. I think it was always something we were going to do. Mm -hmm. that, well, that's fantastic. And you've had such a great career. 
with Grammys, multiple Grammys, yes. and multi-platinum songs and CDs. Yes. And you've worked with some of the biggest names in the business over yes. the years. And, yes. of course, everyone knows A Whole New World. Yes. And uh, that song, I, I remember seeing people Bryson in concert in, uh, in Tokyo oh, okay. at the Blue Note okay. the jazz club there. Yeah. And he sang that song. And I, I, I kept saying, something's missing. <laughs> Where, where's Regina? It was Regina? me. <laughs> that, where's the piece, the most important piece, the Jasmine piece? And, and that's amazing because we've actually done the song in uh, Japan at the Blue Note may, on many occasions together. It's just, you know, sometimes... Uh, the scheduling doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he'll get one of his background singers to sing it with him. Um, and, and who they are wonderful. Um, but it's been, it's been a great, great journey. I, I can honestly say that song has opened doors for me that I never, ever imagined. Mm -hmm. Um, having just having, um, uh, uh, fans from eight to 80, I just never imagined. I mean, being a part of a Thanksgiving Day parade, you know, after, I mean, that was the coup de gras. Okay, well, my grandmother and my grandfather are watching me on television on my float talking about. <laughs> I'm sure the little kids say, wait a minute, Jasmine doesn't look like that on right. the movie. Right. But there you are. And, and, right. and the voice, and it was absolutely lovely. And was Thank that an you. unexpected surprise? I mean, it really was because, you know, during the time that I recorded A Whole New World, um, I was on the road. And in fact, I was on the road so much, I had actually gotten sick. So I was in the studio recording A Whole New World with bronchitis. Wow. Right. So, you yeah. know, it, I didn't really, I didn't really have the time. To sit back and say, wow, you know, we really did this. You know, thank you, God. I, I just never, it wasn't until um, I got to the Grammys and to hear your name, it's like, <laughs> me? <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> and, you know, Tim Rice and Alan Macon are saying, they, they, we, we won. We won. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, oh, okay. <laughs> You know, so, I mean, what a hallmark moment, mm -hmm. you know, just, um, just incredible. I mm -hmm. mean, that night, I, I, I think my face, when I got home, my face was hurting. I just was smiling so much. It was just, it's just, I can't even, I, I can't imagine even having that feeling. Um, you know, growing up, you say, you know, I, I've, I've accepted my Grammy many times, you know, with, with pieces of the lamp. You right, know? right. Thank you so much. In front of the mirror, practicing. Thank you. You know, I'm speaking into the broom. I mean, I have, you know, I've gotten my awards so many times, but to actually get it, you know, it's like. <laughs> and when you're on stage and you're giving the speech, you had written a speech, I assume you were kind of prepared. In well, case. actually, they did, they did hours behind. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't during, it, it didn't air during the time. During that, the telecast? You know, yeah. Okay. But so, so, but still. Mm-hmm. Trying to find the words. Right, right. Because, I mean, I'm in there. I, I don't remember. Everybody was in the category with me, but I believe Vanessa Williams was in the category with me. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, we won. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> we won. You know, it's like, yeah, it's great to be nominated, but winning is so much better. <laughs> yeah, I didn't say that. Out. There I, it is. I, the right. truth comes out. <laughs> Right, right. I'm so sorry, but I really mean that. Winning is better. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Winning is better because I'm still getting doors opening from winning. That's right. Okay. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I, I mean, it, 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 the truth hurts. <laughs> We're talking with Regina Bell. The new album is uh, The Day Life Began. Yes. I read where you had uh, a song come to you at four in the morning. You were sitting at the table writing at four in the morning. Is yeah. that the normal procedure for Regina Bell? Can you believe that? I, you know, actually, um, my best writing time is early in the morning, but four is a little bit late for me. But, <laughs> um, you know, I, I had this song and I was kind of toiling with it. And it reminded me of vintage R&B mm -hmm. from the 70s, what I grew up with. And so I wanted to write um, reflective of that period. And so I was writing the lyrics out. My husband was at the table doing a puzzle. Why he was up that time of morning, I have no idea. Um and so I was writing and, you know, I, I was singing a little bit of it. And he said, um, you've written that song before. Didn't even look up at me. And I was like, no, I haven't. I just, I just wrote this. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, you've written that song before, indicating that that song has been across the board 8,000 times. And what he was saying is, you know, and he calls me Gene. He said, Gene, you know, the, the majority of relationships are baggage, People are bringing baggage from, you know, when they grew up, you know, their parents, school, 
past relationships. He said that the perfect relationship is when they come together, it can make all that baggage work. And I thought about that and I was like, okay, well, I'm old school. So, you know, I write things down on paper. I do eventually transport it to the computer, but I still write stuff down in paper. So I now I trash the paper because I'm mad because he's right. And he tells me, you know, you have to remember, you know, as a believer, you always have to make sure that you put the message. There has to be a message, a clear message. And you can't write about fairy tale relationships because there aren't any. And so um, I went back and that's how I came up with imperfect love. So the ability for people to bring their baggage together mm -hmm. and actually lay it down and say, we're going to make this thing work is a much greater testimony, I think, or a testament to what true love is. Mm. So that's where I tried to write from.
Now, musically speaking, the day life began for you. You're on tour for the new album? Yes. yes and yes. where's the tour going to take you? Are people around the world going to get a chance um, to see Regina Yeah, Bell? well, it's better. The better question is where is the tour not going to take you? Oh, me? great. <laughs> well, that's good. We're kind of going <laughs> everywhere. I'm also on, um, uh, I just left the Gospel Music Cruise. Um, I'm doing um, jazz, uh, Capital Jazz Festival Cruise. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm on tour with Fred Hammond um, towards the fall. Um, the Festival of Praise, I think it's called. And um, there are just a number of things going on, like, kind of throughout, mm-hmm. you know, D.C., Virginia, Maryland, um, uh, Texas. Uh, Houston's a, you know, favorite of mine, going back and forth. there. Yeah, recorded many, a couple of albums there. So mm-hmm. it's kind of been a place of residence almost for me. Um, New York, of course, New York and New Jersey, um, where my old stomping grounds are. Hmm. Um we, so we're going to kind of be all over the place. Kentucky, there's a number of places on the on the book. So I'm looking forward to it. And internationally, you're going out of the country as well? Um, absolutely. Um, South Africa is coming up. I'm going to Japan next great, month. Great, great. Um, and so, it, yeah, it's going to be wide open. The Virgin Islands are going to be... T- uh, Getting out busy. as well. Yeah. Busy, busy girl. Yeah, so if people want to believe that I'm more busy now than I was at 25. <laughs> Get out of here. Well, that's all right. That's great. That's yeah. the secret to being, you know, you're youthful and you look gorgeous. Thank you. You're absolutely gorgeous. So if people want to find out where you're performing and uh, they want to get your album on you I can guess go your to reginabell.org. Regina you can Bell. find me on Facebook. Um, I'm on Twitter at I am Regina Bell. Um, Periscope, um, Instagram, I'm everywhere. I guess mm-hmm. you have to be nowadays, you know, what social media being what it is. Mm-hmm. So you can find me pretty much everywhere. And you've got a great team behind you, as you mentioned yeah. earlier. Some, yes. some some heavyweight producers. And, uh, yes, yes, so this yes. this is fantastic. Um, from the group All For One. In fact, they're coming together uh, uh, with 90s. their new record. Yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. So um, uh, it's wonderful having Jamie Jones and Jack Krugel to work with me. Um, it, the The... The studio time was amazing. Mm -hmm. We did 10 songs in five days. Who does that? Mm, Just amazing. I got to work on, I got to sing on Jimi Hendrix's um, microphone. Mm. They had it restored. And when I tell you the sound that came out of there was just so incredible. I recorded in Marvin Gaye's old studio. Oh, wow. So I mean, you couldn't wow. ask for a better experience. And if I could have, I mean, the the music was just flowing. But I really wished I would I could have extended it longer because I just loved being in there. We just mm-hmm. had such a great time.
we're we're so happy that you came to the Voice of America and and uh, and gave us of your time Thank and performed you. for us. Be, your, your voice is beautiful. Thank you. You haven't lost the ability Thank to you. sing. I mean, every note was. Absolutely gorgeous. I love the album. Thank you. And so, uh, you know, I thank you for coming on the show. Oh, I'm glad to be here. Voices of America, this is uh, this is old stomping grounds for me as well. The first time I came here was 1987. Wow. So I've I've been a friend for a long time. You're, you've got a parking space with your name on it. In front of the building, which <laughs> I really home. should. I really should. We love your music and, and all that you've done and continue to do. And how about the next album? Are you Is this going to be... Reoccurring? Are you in R and B to stay, or is this just something you want to, you know? Well, this album is not just R and B. Actually, mm-hmm. it's R and B, it's gospel, it's jazz, mm-hmm. and a little bit of country. Believe it or not, I there's a song on there called "Be Careful Out There," and when I first heard it, it was written for a country artist, mm-hmm. and I heard it and I said, "Oh no, I gotta have that." And the song is basically my follow up to "If I Could," and the there's a part in the song that says, "Um." Um, there are devils around each corner, and when they play, they don't play fair. Go on and fly, but be careful out there. And it's just a song wow. Wow. to my kids, wow. to you know, letting them know that the world doesn't love you like we do. Mm-hmm. You know, we protected you from a lot of things, and there's a lot of stuff that you're going to have to go through just to live this thing called life. But you know, keep your eyes open, and all the stuff that my husband and I have poured into you. You know, use it. Let it manifest. Rise to the top. Mm. And I promise you it'll help you. Well, the worldwide audience loves Regina Bell. Everyone loves Regina Bell. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. It's The Day Life Began, the new album, Regina Bell. And I'm Larry London. This is Border Crossings. 